Uh, please welcome uh, Paul Wesley. Hi, everyone. Dina Shahabi and writer director Sean Mullen. Paul, you are a, you are a hunk. Did you hear all this screaming going on? It's my it's my it's it. It's, it's, that's for, that's for me. My, that's for me. That's for family that's for members. Me. This is my whole my extended yeah, family. family. Yeah. I'm from Jersey, so. <laughs> uh, Sean, I just wanted to talk to you about a, a sort of uh, how this all came together and how you cast these two incredibly handsome people uh, in your movie. Uh, how did I cast yeah. handsome people? Uh, yeah. These, um, these handsome people in These in handsome people? Yes. I got really lucky, to be honest with you. You know, I'm Dina audition she put herself on tape and um it was incredible i mean i saw the audition and just amira kind of came to life you know she she just popped like, like she popped out of my uh you know my imagination and on onto the onto the screen there and so i got really lucky and uh in with paul we had a mutual connection through a producer uh terry leonard which was awesome and uh he recommended paul and i, I saw paul we were kind of sharing some office space at the time on, on another film he was working on and uh i said you know sent him the script and i just crossed my fingers you know and how did you guys sort of become involved? Was it the script that sort of won you over, or, or how did you first? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I love the script, uh, but it was, I saw Sean's short. I loved his sh short films called Sadiq. Sadiq, yeah. Um, and then I saw, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this, but I saw Dina's audition. <laughs> like somebody, Terry, the, I, it's really kind of <laughs> awful that I'm saying this. She knows, that's why it's okay. But I saw her audition, they were like, oh, look who's playing the lead girl. And I saw it and I was like, oh man, this girl's so good. Um, and then I was like, I'm in. That was it. <laughs> and what about you, Dina? I mean, you obviously you like auditioned. I invaded your privacy. <laughs> No, what's funny is that everyone saw my audition except me. I saw it one month ago for the first time, and um, thank you. That's very nice. Um, yeah, I auditioned. Um, I heard about the movie from my manager and my friend, Laith Neckley, who plays my uncle in the film. And I loved the script, and yeah, auditioned, and then I had a call back with Sean, and... The rest is history. <laughs> uh, no, but where did the story sort of come from? Because it's, it's, you know, sort of an unusual story, and it, it plays on romantic comedy tropes, but it seems very fresh. I mean, what was sort of the, the intention? Well, I mean, I, I love a good love story. I think most people do, right? And so the idea is how do, you, how do you make it new? How do you make it fresh? I mean, I had my first screenwriting job, I was hired to write a screenplay for Britney Spears, which was hilarious. Like, like working with well, her. What was, and, the, what was the project? Well, working with her turned out to be much funnier than the script. Uh, but, <laughs> um, but she's awesome. I mean she, she, I mean, she was great, but it was just a very, you know, crazy process. During that process, I watched every romantic comedy that had ever been made because I was nervous as hell. Because what the, was I going to do? And so um, I learned what not to do, really. And uh, you know, I leaned on some of my favorites. There's a great film from 1955 called Marty with uh, Ernest Borgnine, which is just this fantastic love story about outsiders. And I just uh, the idea of two people who don't fit in anywhere, but like with each other, to me, is very just a romantic concept. And can you talk about the setting? The movie's set in 2008. And yes. I mean, p trying to pull off any kind of period thing on what I'm assuming was a very tight budget must have been yeah. fun. Uh, but w but why 2008 specifically? It's a huge budget, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Hundred million, million dollars. Transformers, yeah. 100 million, then, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, no, we, uh, you know, yeah. I just I felt like that's right. You know, right before the market, it was the peak. Right before the market crashed and everything. And I thought that was just a ripe setting to 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 tell this story. And I had lived in New York for a long time, and I was kind of have a very rich background. I'd gone to uh, undergrad at West Point, like an hour north of the city, and uh, I used to come down here when I was a cadet and, and get in trouble a lot. And um, I uh, went to grad school at Columbia here, so I just have a, a lot of um, deep ties to the city, and I, uh, I just felt like this was the place to tell this story, you know? And uh, this is for everybody. What was it like working? Would I, how long did you have to shoot? We shot the movie in three weeks, 16 okay. and a half days. Wow. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, from the actor's standpoint, was it, did you get to improv at all or come up with new things or was it pretty much reciting what was on the page and getting the hell sort of out of there? Yeah, it was a combination of his lines and his script and then he would give us the freedom to improv and play with it and yeah, just have fun. I was senile. I was on the, I was shooting my show <laughs> during the week and then coming on the weekends and shooting this and I was like, I would be like shooting an all nighter on a Friday, get on a plane, shoot this, and like I don't even yeah, know. I know he'd be like, "I'm exhausted." I'm, I'm like, "I'm like, use it, yeah, you know? <laughs> just use it." Your character's remember. tired. I don't remember anything. Action. Um, no, it was great. A lot of improv, which Sean encouraged. 
And, yeah. and shooting in New York, I'm sure, must have added its own share of sort of unpredictable elements. Uh, yeah, I mean, pros and cons, you know? I mean, obviously, I mean, it's a wonderful place to shoot, you know, the energy and the, pr the production design and the, cr the crew you can get here is unlike anywhere else. So it, it was all a plus in my mind. I feel like, Dana, you were selling your DVDs like down the street. Where, 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 yeah, was that right. close? Like, yeah, it was, you know, uh, just off the canal okay. subway stop um, on the end train. That's where I was standing around and they crossed the street and like hid while I sold fake DVDs to random people. How did you come up with the little, I love the little sort of synopses you give <laughs> each, each movie. Did you, was, did you yeah. sort of come up with that? No, I mean, it was uh, yeah. mostly in the script, but I think some of it was... Some uh, of it I made up on the spot because I'd watched all those movies. Right. Um, I just thought it was Did hilarious. Did you have there's, any there's like, there's weird reactions from, from like people that were well, like, yeah, there strangers? Was, <laughs> there, was, there was actually one guy who I almost convinced to buy a, buy a yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, how much? He's like, yo, how like, much? Five how bucks, much? five <laughs> bucks. Yeah. She's like haggling with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is great. This is great. <laughs> I hope you take uh, Amir and Sam Blu-rays out when, it, when it's yeah. ready. Right <laughs> That's that. how we'll sell we'll the promo. film. I'll just be yeah. up there. Um, let's pause for a second and take a look at a clip from the movie. This is sort of when your romance is burgeoning with Martin Starr, who is unfortunately not here, but is a hoot. So let's watch that. Ooh, so cute. Ooh. What's going to happen on the bed? Oh, oh no. <laughs> Never guess. Got to see the movie to see what happens on the bed. Um, <laughs> I think that we should the have you 100%. just do that throughout the movie. I should just be narrated. <laughs> By the way, like in the just behind narrate. the scenes Blu-ray like version, I should just yeah. be, be the narrating narrator. as like yeah. this like overly. Ooh, ooh, ooh is she gonna go in bed? Let's get out. Don't go in bed. Now, can I ask everybody what it was like working with with Martin? Because he is absolutely fantastic in this movie. Very different, and you guys obviously have two very different sort of relationships with him. Um, what was that sort of process like? Um, he's the best. I was about to say he's the worst and make a joke out of it. But no, he's the best and was just so fun to work with, so generous, always unpredictable. <laughs> I'm sure you've experienced yeah. that. <laughs> always joking. Um, he, he would always mess with Sean. Sean would tell him to do something and he would do the opposite. And so by the end of the shoot, it rubbed off on me. So Sean would tell us to do something and then we would both do the opposite. <laughs> and I, like, <laughs> Which my head was great exploded. for Sean. Yeah, he loved it. Was, it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it was, I mean, Martin was wonderful, yeah. I mean, um, you know, it, it definitely, like with any actor, you know, you just need to feel each other out for the first couple of days to make sure you trust each other. But once that once that happens, we were we were off and running. Yeah, I was constantly, I was a little intimidated, to be honest with you. Why? Cause you I don't, because, you know, you think comedian, like funny guy, he's going to be like naturally like, you know, uh, oh, warm, but he's very like, I, I mean, I appreciate it now, but he's very like, he just kind of sizes you up. <laughs> And then he just that, but that that still is our relationship. Actually, he's continues. It's just like there's. I'm a little intimidated by him. But what I like about um, uh, working with actors like that is that come from a comedic background is that you kind of never know what they're gonna do next. It's unpredictable. So your reaction is always spontaneous and always new and always fresh, because it's never really premeditated, which is you know sometimes the case with certain people that are just not that. Interesting. Right. Can I ask what it was like working with Draft House and being a part of Forever Fest? This is for, you were at Forever Fest this past yeah, year. Yeah, it was it was, it was incredible. I mean, they're just you know top top tier you know distributors for independent film. They really you know once we had their stamp of approval, that was really the moment where I felt like okay, we're in the right place, and um, you know I couldn't have been happy as a filmmaker. You, you can't you can. I couldn't be like, any happier. My my AD on on Vampire Diaries and my and my uh, DP, my d uh, director of photography, are movie buffs. Like, and they're hardcore movie buffs. And they're actually one of them's from Austin. And when I told them that Draft House was picking up the film, they were flipping out. They said they're like Draft House is a batting average that is perfect. Yeah, Every film amazing. they put out is perfect. And I'm like, it's yeah. just <laughs> kind of amazing uh, to be honest with you. Um, let's watch another clip where Dina is super hilarious at a uh, at Paul's party, Paul's engagement party, right? What is yeah. this? No. Yeah, no. It's a clip from the movie. He engaged all of you. See, it's very, it's cute. They'll, they'll watch it, I think. Um, can you talk about sort of things that maybe didn't make it into the movie that that you wish were were still there, or was? Pretty much everything shot. Oh, like all of Paul's nude scenes that we yeah. talked about that earlier. Yeah. Was it? 
I, I was ready to go, man. <laughs> Full frontal. I was. Uh, no, I mean, we didn't have <laughs> enough. We didn't have enough. God. Yeah, we didn't. Explicit, my explicit. We, didn't, explicit. Uh, we really didn't have enough money to 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 waste time shooting stuff we weren't going to use. So I mean, I had ninety nine percent of what we shot. Ninety eight percent probably is in the film. There's that amazing shot though, um, when I was in my office uh, looking down on Ground Zero that didn't make. Very it. cool. That was a cool shot. Very cool shot. Yeah, but a couple whatever. handful of shots. No scene. Well, not one scene. I guess there's a scene of Martin. You know, there's really a topless up. scene of Martin that didn't make it oh, into yeah, the movie. Yeah, there isn't is. there? yeah, yeah, exactly. So there is nudity. Yeah, it's yeah. cut. Um, can you talk about what it was like? Sort of, the movie has a kind of political edge, but it sort of walks that line, you know, very finely. Can you talk about what it was like to sort of weave that in, but never be sort of too heavy-handed? Yeah, well, I think if you're making a film about like issues, you know, this is you know veteran assimilation and immigration. Those can be very heavy topics, and nobody wants to go to a movie and really be preached to or just like be bored with stuff like that. You know, so so instead, you know, you need to connect emotionally with an audience, you know, and I felt like if we could just create a story where you've got two people that the audience is rooting for and, you know, they're dealing with these complex issues, but in an intimate way, you know, that, that speaks to audiences universally, uh, that's the best way to reach audiences and, you know. Well, on that note, I want to show this third clip, which I'm really excited to talk to everybody about. Um, so let's see that. That scene is amazing, and I just want to ask uh, Paul sort of, and Sean what it was like to write it, what it was like to perform it. Um. Uh, whew, um, it was a lot of information that I had to, <laughs> I don't know anything about the stock markets, and <laughs> uh, I'm a college dropout. Don't do it, kids, but I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, I just I, I, I had to sort of learn about the sort of um, I don't know. I spoke to some of Sean's uh, Wall Street friends, and I had to really, really understand what I was saying, so that it wasn't just completely coming out of my mouth. But I, you had to believe that I that I really believed in what I was saying. So I had to do a lot of research. Um, but I don't know. We shot it in like a diner, and it was just kind of it just came naturally. I mean, do you have any? Do you it, remember? It was a diner. It was still like a working diner. Was it, was it a <laughs> yeah. working diner? No, I mean, I think we had it for the half day or something. Right. But it was it was a, we had to shoot quickly. I remember. So um, yeah, I think it came together well. It is a lot of information. It's one of those scenes where you know it was uh, you know it's tricky to to edit to make sure you have enough, but not too much stuff. But uh, I think it all works out well. And did you write that sort of before the Occupy stuff went on? And I mean, because the the use of one percent is obviously very powerful. It was after in that the scene. Occupy stuff. Okay. Yeah. No. Um, I think that we have time for a few questions, possibly vampire related. I'm not sure. Uh, my question is for Paul. So uh, you're mainly <laughs> no. <laughs> for being an actor, um, but you've been recently dabbling with directing, like on The Vampire Diaries. So I was just wondering if like your experience as an actor has kind of helped you with directing in any way? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to plug my episode. It airs on Thursday. <laughs> um, We're out of here. Directed by your very own <laughs> yours truly. Um, no, but that's a really good question. I'll try to make it quick so I don't bore everyone. But yeah, I um, definitely, uh, as an actor, I, I, I appreciate when certain directors sometimes less is more is what I learned um, and sometimes um, it's best to just let actors play Sean was really good at that and that's something that I learned when directing the show you would think that I would um, get in there and be like do it this way it's really about making everyone the best that they can be in their own natural presence that's what I learned Sean, how do you feel about your directorial skills being put to use? Uh, oh, by by Paul. By and, Paul, yeah. Oh, uh, wonderful, great, yeah. I mean, take him, man. Take him and run. I. Dean, are you gonna watch the episode or no? Of course. Okay. <laughs> you better. Yeah. Friendship over yeah, if you don't. <laughs> uh, hi. Um, I have one for Paul. Uh, what do you? Really? Hi. Uh, what's your opinion on the plot of the movie? Like, what do you think of it? What do I think of the plot? I, I love it. Um, I love uh, films that take place in New York. I love, I mean, this was a very difficult time in America, particularly in New York, post 9-11. Um, it uh, really affected, I mean, my family's from here and or this neighborhood, they're from Jersey, but let's don't hold that against them. Um, Represent. But thank you. Um, but, uh, you know, I, like Sean was saying, it's two people that are complete opposites coming together on, in this environment that is really kind of, um, uh, I don't know, uh, a, t a really trying time. I find that setting to be really dynamic, so um, I love it. It's for Paul. Hi. <laughs> I'm Jamie. Hi. How you doing, Jamie? <laughs> 
What is it like working with Nina and Ian? On <laughs> the Hell Vampire on Earth. No, <laughs> I'm just I kidding. I love you. Thanks. Um, it's great. Paul, I love you. Thank you. You inspire me. What? Thank you. Inspire you inspire me. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Dina. How are you? Dina? I'm good. Thank you. Oh, I'm over here. <laughs> um, so coming from the Middle East, how do you feel you've, I guess, paved the way for people to have available opportunities to go into filming and artistry like that? Oh, my God. Um, I mean, I hope that, that I begin to do that in some way, but I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. I... I think what's cool about this film is that I play a, a Middle Eastern woman that is someone you wouldn't necessarily see everywhere, and so that was really exciting to me to show a different side, and I hope that, that maybe that'll start people t you know, to tell those kind of stories more often. That's what I hope. Yeah, I mean, I think the film is about challenging perceptions on, on all levels, you know, whether it's uh, veterans or immigrants, and, and uh, you know, that's kind of what we were after, so hopefully it helps. And that people will re can relate to a character like Amira. I think that's really exciting. Hi, my question's for Sean. I know. Wow. You over there. Sorry, Paul. Oh, oh me? No, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'll let him answer. You were talking about how you didn't want to shove things down people's throats and you wanted them to walk out with a feeling. If there's any feeling people could walk out of the movie with, like a new idea, what would it be? Well, I mean, like I said, challenging perceptions is a nice one. You know, not judging a book by its cover. And, you know, the, the, the media has a tendency to drive certain narratives down your throat. You know, every veteran is a loose cannon. And, you know, every immigrant is, you know, a, a troublemaker or this or not, you know, not, not supposed to be here. And I, I think those are misconceptions that have, um, you know, marginalized both veterans and immigrants. And so, you know, all that being said, that all sounds very political and heavy. But when you watch the film, it's a very, hopefully, you know, touching, sweet, you know, engaging love story about, you know, finding something somebody I think the most important thing when you fall in love is finding somebody who who really gets you and, and understands you you know All right. hi my questions for Paul and I was just wondering how does your character in the movie compare to your character on the vampire diaries mm -hmm. they're both blood sucking <laughs> but in different ways <laughs> no I don't know uh, compare they're really the polar opposites I mean um, Charlie's you know <laughs> married and on Wall Street and I think Stefan was sitting in a high school desk two years ago <laughs> which was really embarrassing as a 30 year old man I was like this is ridiculous <laughs> why am I now why am I in high school <laughs> this doesn't make any sense um, you know really they're polar opposites um, uh, which is why I really you know love them both for their own you know reasons um, so, thanks for asking. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, Paul. Dzień dobry. Hi. Dobry oh, wieczór. Dzień dobry. Oh, <laughs> fellow, fellow Polish friend over here. Yes. Guys, I want to ask you uh, regarding the last events in, with Charlie Hebdo, how you are feeling about it. Well, the idea is, idea, you know, I mean, Amir is not meant to represent any one religion or any one, you know, culture. She's a conflicted, fallible young woman who is on a journey and... You know, Dina, I don't know if you want to speak to that more. I mean, Dina grew up in the Middle East, and you want to talk yeah, to that? Yeah, we, we wanted to, Amira to be, to, to the picture of her to be seen as this, yeah, this someone's torn between two cultures, so it's a heightened, the way she's dressed is a heightened way of expressing that. And what happened in Paris is horrendous and is absolutely horrible, and every artist should have the power to express themselves and... So that's yeah. how we feel Yeah, I mean, about free it, speech is yeah. the fundamental, you know, right of humanity, hopefully, you know. So we're all on the same team there. Hi, um, my name is Marita. I have a question for all of you in general. Um, first of all, I think that statement was fantastic um, because we're from New York City. So, you know, everybody comes here for an opportunity. So I think that's amazing. My question is regarding the production process. Um, in terms of editing, I'm just curious as to uh, what system you guys used and if other people played a part in it, like if you guys may have played a part in the editing process, just out of curiosity. I mean, Paul cut the movie on his laptop, right? No. Um, did you use iMovie? Apple. Uh, Apple. Like, <laughs> uh, no, we did cut on a Mac, yeah, Final Cut, if that's a plug. It's on sale downstairs, you can get it now. Um, uh, no, uh, yeah, we show, I don't know, I mean, editing is, yeah, I mean, 
Um, our editor, Julian Robinson, a fantastic editor out in Los Angeles. He, you know, um, you know, really, I don't know, the process was, it was pretty, I, we didn't have much room for error in the editing, so I'd say a majority of the shots I set up, I shot very deliberately, the film is very deliberately set up. There's one take that's a, that whole bed thing is a seven minute take with no cuts, and so we, we didn't, I was very, um, everything I shot, I, I tried to use a majority of it, so not much ended up on the cutting room floor, if that helps. Sean, what were your influences, chiefly? I mean, I mean, influences. Uh, I, I would say, I mean, so just story-wise, I mean, a, a great, you know, great, great love stories. You know, um, you know, like I said, Marty before the original, you know, the original version of Rocky. If you look at Rocky and Adrian, I mean, they're two outsiders that nobody, nobody really gets, and they kind of get forced together. Stuff like that. I mean, there was an Irish film from a few years ago called Once, which is a beautiful love story. Have you guys have seen that? And uh, it's a good one, right? Um, and uh, that's my fan club, Paul. Watch out. And. Uh, <laughs> And um, so yeah, and then and there's a I don't know that then like for for Paul's storyline, there's a great film called On the Waterfront, which you guys weren't born, um, but uh, but uh, there's a great storyline where Marlon Brando's character is u kind of used by his brother, um, uh, and so the name and the, his brother Marlon Brando's brother's name and that is Charlie, so that's where his name comes from, On the Waterfront. So yeah, I don't know a lot of in Manhattan, Woody Allen, there's shot of, by the bridge. I mean, I stole that. I mean, that's right. just a stolen shot. That's the an homage. homage. Oh, homage. <laughs> yes. I, I'm going to yeah. call it that instead of a theft. Um, <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, then, then my favorite film of all time is a, is a 1959 Russian film called Ballad of a Soldier. And if you guys love a good love story, it's, it's, it's highly recommended. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful story about this really kind of moral soldier in the Russian war who falls for a girl and, and is tested. You, guys, you just got a lot of 16-year-old uh, girls into post-Soviet like, Russian like, cinema. So. Yeah, but like, what's 1959? Awesome, yeah. Yeah. Let us all uh, thank Sean uh, and Dina. And you know this guy, Paul. That's Thanks, guys. So shriek. Thank yeah. you guys for coming. Hey, thank you. Thank so you guys so much. I appreciate really the support. Amir and Sam.